Rock family, we're so glad you decided to join us tonight for our midweek service. Listen, we want you to interact as much as possible. Like, share, and comment on those this live stream. Listen, hit those hearts if you like what you hear. We want to interact with you as much as possible. We cannot wait to see what God's going to do. Let's go into service. Jesus, we realize fear. 
Good evening, Living Rock family and friends. We're so glad that you've tuned in this evening to watch our Wednesday night service. We're still going through this pandemic, as you well know, but you know what? God has everything under control. We put everything in His hands, and we're trusting Him to get us through this, and He will. And we just miss seeing you guys face to face. So we appreciate you watching us by live stream, hitting the like button, hitting some, making some comments, and we're thankful for that. It's time for us to receive our off offering as we uh, do on Wednesday night. And we want to ask you and encourage you to give electronically if you possibly can. The numbers will be on the screen at 734-304-5080 as well as Easy Tide. And so uh, let's pray uh, as you get ready to give. And we're just going to believe God to bless and get us through this. We encourage you to be faithful in your giving as we continue to have the same kind of expenses pretty much as we normally would when we uh, have services. So let's pray first. Father, in the lovely, wonderful, precious, matchless name of Jesus, we come before you. This evening, we thank you for each one that's watching by live stream. We ask you to bless them and touch them, keep them healthy. We plead the blood of Jesus to cover them against this coronavirus. And then, Father, we pray that you'd open up the windows of heaven and pour them out a blessing there's not room to receive. And Father, we thank you for their generosity. We ask you to, to bless the offerings and tithe to, to reach lost souls for your honor and for your glory in the lovely name of Jesus. Once again, we thank you for tuning in. Please, like I said, like us, make some comments and get ready for some great word. We're going to turn it over to Pastor James right now. Hey, everybody. We're so glad that you decided to join us for midweek service. Listen, our midweek services have been so great, and I'm planning that just because we're going online and we're, we're not able to meet face-to-face -face doesn't mean that our midweek service can't be just as great. I believe it can be even greater. Our spread can be even farther. And so I'm telling you, it's going to be a great time. So I'm ready to bring a word if you're ready to receive it. So I want you to turn your Bibles with me to Acts chapter 3. Acts chapter 3, if you're at home. Home. Listen, you have so many ways to get a hold of the word, and I encourage you through this time, even though we're not meeting face to face, I encourage you to get in your word every day. We should be doing that either way, even if there is a virus or not, but uh, get in your word every day. Find a, a book to read, a Bible study, something that gets the word in you. I encourage you to pay less attention to the news and more attention to the word of God because the, the, the news spreads panic, but the word spreads the promise and the presence of God. So get in your word and just dig into it and learn from it. Amen. Acts chapter 3 and we're going to start right at verse 1 and if you want to stand wherever you're at that's fine. If not that's okay. I just like to honor the word of God. Amen. Acts chapter 3. We're going to start reading at verse 1 and if you're there why don't you say amen. amen. All right. I, hey that's nice and loud. I like it. Amen. I heard you all the way from your home. Amen. <laughs> Acts chapter 3 verse 1. It says now Peter and John went up together to the temple at the hour of prayer the ninth hour and a certain man that was lame from his mother's room was carried whom they laid daily at the gate of the temple which is called beautiful to ask alms of those who entered the temple who seeing Peter and John about to go into the temple asked for alms and fixing his eyes on him with John, Peter said, look at us. So he gave them his attention, expecting to receive something from them. Then Peter said, silver and gold I do not have, but what I do have I will give you in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. Rise up and walk. And he took him by the right hand and lifted him up, and immediately his feet and ankle bones received strength. So he, leaping up, stood and walked and entered into the temple with them, walking, leaping, and praising God. And all the people saw him uh, walking and praising God. Then they knew that it was he who sat begging alms at the beautiful gate of the temple. And they were filled with wonder and amazement at what had happened to him. Now, if I can, just for a few moments, I won't take up much of your time tonight. But I want you to get with me. Even though you're not here in person, I want you to, to hit share, hit like. Let those hearts go up. Say amen. Come on. I still need your encouragement. Amen. But I want you to get with me if the Holy Ghost will allow me. I want to preach on the subject more than I expected. More than I expected. Come on church and let's pray. Father in the name of Jesus. Lord we're so grateful for this opportunity. God I'm thankful that no matter what they shut down they can't shut down the real church. Amen. They may shut down the real ch the, the church houses but they can't shut down the church and God I'm thankful that we have this opportunity to be able to spread the gospel in creative ways Father. And God 
I pray, Lord, that right now, tonight, that Holy Spirit, that you would invade every household. I pray that you would be with every single person watching this live stream, whether they're watching it right now live or they watch it later on. Holy Spirit, I pray that you would speak to them. Holy Spirit, I pray that you would touch them, heal them, deliver them, save them. Holy Spirit, and God, I pray, Lord, that the gospel would be preached. I pray, anoint me, God. Make me effective. Let your words flow out of my mouth. Be upon me, Holy Spirit, and let you flow out of me like rivers of living water. And God, I pray, Lord, that you would open up our ears, open up our minds, and open up our hearts to receive the word that is going forth. Let it land on good ground. Let it bring forth fruit in due season, God. We love you. We thank you. And we praise you in Jesus' wonderful name. And everybody said... Amen, amen, amen. Real quick, I want you to look what whoever's around you. If you're by yourself, just say it to yourself. Say, neighbor, I'm going to get more than I expected. Amen. You know, uh, I remember not too long ago, it was uh, probably a couple years back now, I, I was hanging out with some of my friends and, uh, and uh, I was about to get off work and they texted me and they said, hey, they said, uh, I'm, we're about to go see a, a movie, me and my, uh, it was his fiance at the time, we're about to go see a movie, you want to come and uh, hang out with us for a little bit? And I was, and I didn't have anything else to do, so I was said, you know what, sure, I'll, I'll tag along, I'll third wheel it, amen. I was like, I'll go along with you, so I got... And I said, sure, I'll do that. And so he pulled up, and he had one of those uh, you uh, those cars that are real small, you know. And and so I, I remember I was seeing his car pull in, and and I uh, opened up the car door, and I sat down in the car, and and I remember specifically already feeling the tension while entering the car because the the that him and his fiance were uh, they were having an intense moment of fellowship, if you would. Uh, maybe not arguing, but they were. Just just, you know, talking to each other. And I, I felt the tension when I got in the car. And I remember thinking to myself, what did I just get myself into? What did I just get dropped into? And I remember sitting in the car saying, hey, I was trying to talk. They didn't feel like talking. It was real quiet. I said, oh, dear Lord, uh, this is about to be a long night. And we started to drive off. And I remember all of a sudden, they just, somebody said something. And they just started going at it. And I'm just sitting in the back seat of that little car like, oh, dear Jesus. I, I, I was feeling awkward. I didn't want to say anything. And I, they're just going back and forth, back and forth. And I remember thinking, oh, man, how am I going to get through this? How is this going to end up? It was just one of those things where I just said, Lord, just help me get through this. Help me get through the night. Let me get through the movie. Let me get out of this car so that I can, you know, enjoy myself. Amen. And I, I, I remember just feeling hopeless and feeling like I was, I'm just going to have to try and make it through this. Like I have been dropped in the middle of something that I had no control over. But yet I felt the, uh, the, the tension. I felt all, the, all the, 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 the tension of the situation. And I remember thinking, I just got to get through this. I don't have control over this. But I was dropped in the middle of it. And I know sometimes we feel like that in our own lives. Like we're thinking, oh, how did I get in the middle of this? Have you ever felt like you've been dropped in the middle of something that you had no control over? Dropped in the middle of something that you weren't planning on? Dropped in the middle of something and said, God, I'm, I'm feeling the tension. God, I'm feeling the stress. God, I'm feeling the frustration. And I don't have control over it. I didn't plan on it. But somehow life drops you right in the middle of that situation. Sometimes it's relationship problems. Sometimes Sometimes it's marital problems. Sometimes it's issues with our health. Sometimes it's issues with our finances. And it's just issue after issue. And you just feel like I've been dropped in the middle of this. And I have no control over it. And you're just having the thoughts, I just need to get through this. I just got to get through this. I've just got to make it to the end of this. Somehow, some way. I, I know it's not going to last forever. But sometimes it feels like we've been in the situation so long that we just learned to accept it. I've been sick so long, I just, I just choose to accept it because this is, this is all I know. Or, or maybe I've been had so much problems in my marriage, just, I just need to accept it that I'm not going to be happy. Or I've been depressed so long that I've just got to, uh, to accept it. I've been anxious so long, I've just got to accept it. And it just feels like the situation is never going to get better because you've been in it so long. And I've been dropped in this situation. I didn't choose this for myself. 
How many knows we don't choose to be depressed? We don't choose to be anxious. We don't choose to be sick. We don't choose these things, but sometimes you just feel like you've been dropped in the middle of it. Even now, I know we can all relate to this because we all feel, I bet this whole nation, this whole world, can relate to this feeling because we all feel like we've been dropped in the middle of this pandemic and here we are stuck in the middle of it and I didn't choose to be in this. I didn't choose to have to be quarantined. I didn't choose to have to deal with all the stress and the anxiety and the panic of what's going on around me. I didn't choose this but I feel like I've been dropped in the middle of this and I just feel like I need to accept it because this is just how it's going to be. I've got to be scared. I've got to deal with the panic. I've just got to accept the bad things. I've got to accept the bad news. I've got to accept all the panic I've, because it just feels like it's been going so long that this is just how it's always going to be. And we've all been in this place where we feel like we've got no hope. We feel hopeless. We feel like it's never going to change. We feel like there's not going to be a silver lining to this all. Doesn't feel like there's not going to be a light at the end of the tunnel. Doesn't feel like we're going to have any kind of improvement. So we might as well just accept it. But I'm telling you right now that that is not the life that Jesus has intended for his followers. That is not the life that Jesus intended for all his children. When we get saved, when we get delivered, when we get set free by the power, the love, and the blood of Jesus, when we get set free, God does not intend for us to accept our conditions, to accept our surroundings, to accept our issues. He says, I have given you life, and I'm not just giving you life, but I've given it to you more abundantly. I've given you a full life, life to the fullest. I don't have to accept my atmosphere, but I can change my atmosphere through the presence of God. Ooh, I feel fired up and there ain't just a few of us in here, amen. Uh, I, I don't have to accept what's going on around me. I know the serious of what's going on in the world today, but I don't have to accept it. I don't have to say this is how it's always going to be because I believe God's given us life and life more abundantly. I don't have to accept my surroundings. I don't have to feel like this is how it's always going to be. I don't have to feel like I'm stuck in a situation and I just got to get through it. But God says I can have life and life more abundantly. I don't have to settle for what's around me, but I can actually accept the abundant life. And we see this demonstrated really and truly in Acts chapter 3. We see it demonstrated all throughout Scripture, all throughout the Word. But one of the best representations of this is, is, is in Acts chapter 3. And we see in Acts chapter 3, listen, the church has just been born. We've literally just had Acts chapter 2 where they were in the upper room and the Holy Ghost came in like a mighty rushing wind and filled every believer that was in the house, 120 that were gathered together. And when they were filled with, these, with the Holy Spirit, when they were filled with the power of God, uh, they came out of the, the upper room and they were all speaking in unknown languages. They were speaking in languages that, that they weren't uh, privy to at the moment moment they didn't understand it they were just speaking words and everybody heard a different language because the town was filled with people from all over the place and they heard a different language but the thing is is they were all the people from that area so they wouldn't understand those languages it was the power of God being displayed for everyone to see it was the power of God showing them that I am real and I have not finished what I've done here the church had literally just been born, the New Testament church. And all of a sudden, we had Peter and John. Peter and John were gathered together in Acts chapter 3. They were walking to the temple to go to prayer, the ninth hour of prayer. There was, See, back in those days, they had three times of prayer. They had the third hour, the sixth hour, and the ninth hour. And so we had, they were in the ninth hour that they were going to pray. And they were going to the temple together. But when they were walking to the temple, they seen a man, a man that was sitting by the temple, sitting by the, the, this gate, the gate called Beautiful. And this, I love what the Bible says. The Bible says it's a certain man. 
It's a certain man. I love because, see, his name was not given. And most theologians would look at this man and say he, he otherwise had no significance. He otherwise had no significance to the world or the culture at that time because if he would have had significance, if he would have had social stature, uh, then he would have been, his name would have been given and he would have been written down with his name. But according to theologians, this man was otherwise unsignificant. But I love what the Bible says because the Bible says this was a certain man. It wasn't just a man. It wasn't just somebody random. It was a certain man. I love when the Bible says it's a certain man because theologians may thought he was insignificant, but the God of heaven and earth thought he was more he was significant enough that he's not just any man, but he's a certain man. He was put there by divine design. He was a certain man. There's many times where we feel like we're insignificant to others. But even when we feel like we're insignificant to others, we are always significant to God. It was a certain man. The certain man who had been lame from birth. When you study him out and you research it, they believe that this man was 40 years of age. If not older than 40 years. And he said that he had been lame from birth. Lame meaning he could not walk. He had some kind of issue to where he could not move his legs. He could not walk on his own. And so literally from the day he was born, he could not walk and he had to depend on others to get him from one place to another. This man had literally from the day he was born had been lame. And how many times do we feel like we've been in that place for so long? For years upon years to where we just accept it. Because I'm sure that 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 was this man's thoughts. Because from the day he was born, he could not walk. From the day he was born, he was weak in his legs. From the day he was born, he had an issue. And so he just learned that, you know what? I might as well accept that I'll never walk again. I, I'll never be able to walk. I, I might as well accept that my situation is never going to change. I might as well accept that I'm always going to have this issue. 40 years he had had this issue. We struggle with something for a week and we feel like everything's gone. This man had an issue for 40 years and he said, I might as well just accept it. I might as well just get used to it because this is my life now. This issue is who I am. He was a lame man. And this was what everybody identified with him was, oh, that's the one who can't walk. Oh, that's the one with that physical issue and he can't move. Oh, that's the one who's got to be carried everywhere. And how many times have we had issues in our life and that's who, how we've received our identity? It's through our issue. That's the lame man. How many times have people looked at us and said, that's the one who's addicted. Oh, that's the one who's depressed. That's the one who's always seeking attention. That's the one who's always sleeping around. That's the one who's got issue. And we are identified by our issue. And we just learn, you know what? I've had it so long. I might as well accept it. I might as well take it as part of my identity. He was a lame man from the day he was born, could not walk, and dependent upon everybody else to take him where he needed to go. Could you imagine living life like that? See, we take our legs for granted. We take our legs for granted that we can walk from one place to another, that whenever we get hungry, we can just go get something to eat, that whenever we want to walk, we get up and go. But this man did not have that luxury in life. He literally depended on everybody else to get him from point A to point B. And it doesn't stop there. See, it says that it's a certain lame man that laid by the gate. And it said that he was asking alms on every, to every single person that walked by. He asked alms or he was asking for money. He was asking for financial support. And he would look at everybody and say, do you have some money? I'm lame. I can't work for myself. I can't, I can't earn a day's wage. Uh, can you have mercy on me? Oh, can, you, can you just spare something? I'll take anything. Sitting by this gate, being placed there by another man, and then upon that, not only can he not walk there, but now he's depending on somebody else to give him something. And he's looking for somebody saying, I need this. I need that. I need this. I need that. 
How many of us live our lives looking to others saying, I need this, I need that. Uh, looking to our boyfriends or our girlfriends saying, I need this and I need that. Looking to our wives and husbands saying, I need this and I need that. Looking to the news saying, I need this and I need that. Looking to culture saying, I need this. And we depend on everybody else to do everything for us because our situation, our issue has made us so bad. To the point where we look on everybody else and say, I need this and I need you a bit. But the thing is, is he was looking to everybody else for something that wouldn't change the situation. Yeah, it may have soothed the pain, but it didn't change the situation. Yeah, it might have numbed the pain, but it, it didn't change the situation. And how many times do we run to something that numbs the pain but doesn't change our situation? Sure, it makes us feel good for the moment, but it doesn't change our situation. We're going to a man or a woman and sleeping with them so that we can get some relief, but it doesn't change our situation. We go to that pornography website, but it doesn't change our situation. And we're looking to everything else saying, God, I want to change. Just give me something. Give me something. I, I, don't, I it don't have to be a lot. Just give me something to get me through. And this man, and I find it ironic that a man who is in such a, a dire situation was sitting at the gate called beautiful. Sitting at the gate called beautiful. Why is it the gate called beautiful? This certain gate, I believe it was the eastern gate to the temple, and from what I've researched, and, and it was covered in what they called Corinthian bronze. Corinthian bronze was not just ordinary type of metal. It wasn't just an ordinary, you just go like gold or silver or, or, or brass. It was not that. The reason it was called Corinthian bronze is because uh, I believe it was 180 years before this certain point in time, 180 years before that, Rome had invaded Corinth. And when they invaded Corinth, they literally took every single statue, every single image, everything that represented Corinth. They took it, whether it was gold, silver, or brass, and they put it and they melted it all down. And when they melted it all down, in the midst of all this tragedy, in the midst of all this chaos, this was melted down and it fused together. This gold, this silver, and this brass all fused together. And but what they didn't realize was when all the, in the midst of all this chaos, in the midst of all this tragedy, in the midst of Rome taking over Corinth, when all these things were burned and melted down, they fused together and guess what? It became something beautiful. Literally, it was valued over gold. It was valued over silver. It was valued over brass. Kings and queens wanted Corinthian bronze. And so when they made this gate, they covered it in Corinthian bronze. According to Jewish history, when the sun would hit it, when the sun was rising in the morning because it was on the eastern side, when the sun would hit it, it would literally look like it was radiating gold. It was a beautiful gate. And I find it interesting that, that something so tragic, something so chaotic, something so terrible, out of something so chaotic and terrible came something so beautiful. And we can take a lesson from that, that out of the midst of chaos, out of the midst of tragedy, out of the midst of trouble, something beautiful can come from something ugly. Oh, the word says he gives us beauty for ashes. Oh my goodness, church. And I'm gonna say right now, this nation may be in the midst of chaos. Our nation may be in the midst of turmoil and trial but I believe something beautiful is going to come from this God's going to turn it around for good and in the midst of such a beautiful gate literally when the sun would hit it it would look like it was radiating gold a man sits by this gate dirty messed up mangled and here he is in the middle of something beautiful but yet still feels hopeless. In the midst of something beautiful, yet is still in a place where he can't help himself. How many times have we been in that place where we're in the middle of a good life, but yet we still feel hopeless? We have a great family, but we still feel unfulfilled. And we have a great job, but we still don't feel like we're doing what we're supposed to be doing. And we're in the middle of something beautiful, but yet we still feel hopeless and begging for just something to get us through. 
I'm in the middle of something beautiful that people literally travel to see. And here I am saying, just, just give me something. He's holding his little cup out saying, just, I'm, I just need some help. I just need something. I need something to get me through. I know my situation ain't going to change, but I just need something. And this man sits there while people literally watching the dust flare up from people walking past him. And the occasional somebody would just throw a little penny here and there and say, here you go. And look down on him like he was a nothing and a nobody. He stands there, just had his head hung down low in shame. Saying, just, just need some alms. Just a little bit of money. He said there, he, he's holding his, this is his cup out, just saying, just give me something. And then all of a sudden he sees some feet stop right before him. He's not used for used to seeing people stop. He's used to people throwing some money his way, but he's never had anybody stop. He, 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 he looks down at Peter and John's feet. Peter, his eyes set upon him, says, look up at me. This man who held his head down in shame, held his head down in hopelessness, accepting the situation around him, Peter demands him to lift his head. Whoo! Like the Bible says in Psalms, that I will lift my eyes into the hills from where my help comes from. You're the, the where Psalms 3 where it says, you're the glory and the lifter of my head. A man who hung his head down in shame. Peter looks at him and says, lift your head up and look at me. This man, not expecting what's going to happen, doesn't know what's going to happen. Picks his head up and looks at Peter and John. Peter looks at him, and I love it. When he looked up at Peter and John, he says that he lifted his head expecting something from them because he's used to people throwing him some change. So he's thinking, hey, they're going to give me something. Maybe they'll give me a meal. Maybe they'll, maybe they'll take, give me some money. Maybe they'll give me a large amount. He, it said that he lifted his eyes expecting to receive something from them. Oh, the power of expectancy. He looked up expecting. Little did he know what he was going to receive that day. Oh, the Bible says that he looked up expecting to receive something. And Peter looks at him and says, I ain't got silver. I ain't got gold. I ain't got none of that. That's what you're used to receiving. You're used to receiving that kind of stuff. I ain't got that. Ah, but he says, but such as I have, that's what I'll give to you. Because one thing I found out about this, about living this way, about following Jesus, is you can't give what you don't have. I can't give you joy if I don't have joy myself. I can't give you peace if I don't have peace myself. I can't give you an answer if I don't have the answer myself. And I can't give you power unless I have power myself. Oh, he said, I can only give you what I have. He says, such as I have, I give unto thee. He says, I want you to get up, stand up, and I want you to walk. He gives him the command, but watch this. Peter says, I want you to rise up, and I want you to walk. But then it says, he grabs him by the right hand. He grabs him by the right hand. So not only did he say it, oh, I love this. Not only did he say it, but he got down and he picked him up. There's a lot of churches right now that are saying a lot of stuff. There's a lot of people who will say a lot of stuff, but there's not a lot of people who will stretch their hand out and say, let me give you a hand. Let me give you a pickup. Let me get you. Oh, we ought to be a people who doesn't just say the message, but we live the message. Who we don't just say we love people to life, but we actually love people to life. Oh my goodness, we need to be like Peter who stretches his hand down and says, let me give you a hand. Peter gets down and he says, grabs him by the right hand, which in that culture was the hand of blessing. Uh -huh. Ooh, it's the hand that you got shaken when you received the inheritance. He grabbed him by the right hand. And the man, all of a sudden, he felt strength enter into his legs. He's never felt that before. 
all of a sudden his ankle bones receive strength. He's definitely never felt that before. And as Peter begins to pick him up, he starts to receive strength in his legs. And all of a sudden he went from a man who had to be laid by the gate. Now he is jumping. Now he is leaping. Oh, now he's walking around like better than he ever been. Oh, he got, oh, it said that he expected something, but he got more than he expected. And that's what I love about God. In Ephesians 3, 20, it says to him who is able to do exceedingly and abundantly over all that I could ever ask or imagine or think. Oh, that's what he received. He got more than he expected. He, didn't, he was ready to accept his surroundings, but in the middle of all his mess, somebody stretched a hand out, and he, got, he was expecting something, but he got more than he expected. Oh, 40 years of one life, and all of a sudden, in one instance, his whole life was shifted. What's what I love about God is God doesn't need a lifetime. God just needs one instance. God doesn't need everything in the world. He doesn't need all the finances, the gold and the silver. All he needs is one man that's willing to put out his hand and said, oh, rise up and walk such as I have. I give unto you. And all of a sudden his life shifted and he got something, but it was more than what he expected. He expected what he wanted, but he got what he needed. I'm thankful that I serve a God that gives me not what I want, but he gives me what I need. So he gets up and he leaps and he jumps and he runs. He's never experienced this before in his life. I'm sure he had tears rolling down his face. I'm sure he's walking up to everybody and saying, look, what, look what's been done. The man just, just said, rise up and walk in the name of Jesus. And I got up and I walked. And I'm, I've had more strength in my legs than I've ever had. And people, because they were used to seeing this man laying at the gate. A couple of them probably brought him to the gate themselves. And now all of a sudden, the one who they're used to seeing him at the gate is now running around and jumping and leaping. And the Bible says he wasn't just jumping and leaping, but he was praising God. Because I'm telling you right now, when you get a miracle, you're not going to sit down and on your blessed assurance. You're not going to sit down and say, well, thank you, Lord, for doing that. No, you're going to get up like that man and start jumping and leaping and giving God praise for what he's done. The man is leaping and jumping. The people are seeing him and they say, is that the man that was sitting by the gate? Is that the one who was sitting by the gate who was lame for for 40 years? The one who couldn't walk for 40 years? I literally just gave him some change earlier today. Is that the same one? Yeah, that's the same one. They said that they prayed in Jesus' name and he got up and he walked. And the Bible says that the people saw what has been done to this man. And when they seen what had been done, the Bible says that they rejo- They started to be filled with awe and wonder and amazement. And they were filled with, what, how did this happen? And then all of a sudden, Peter stands up and gives an altar call. Whew, that's powerful because see, at any point in this time, if, if, if more than ever, the church needs to rise up and be the city on a hill to be salt and light. If there was ever a time when the church needed to be the church, it's now because there's a desperate world out there who's looking for answers. There's a world out there that's desperate for some peace, desperate for some joy, desperate for a change of pace, a change of their situation. There's a world out there that's looking for an answer and the church needs to rise up and say I'll give you what I have I have the answer his name is Jesus and he can change your life he can shift your life you may have been expecting this but God can change it and make your life better than what you ever expected he can give you more than you ever expected because he's able to do exceedingly and abundantly and it's time for the church to be the church and rise up and be the salt and the light and the city on a hill that it was called to be people need to see what God can do people need to see the power the love the mercy and the grace of God and that they can they need to be able to see that God can give them not just what they want but God can give them everything they ever needed that God can give them that abundant life. That God can give them joy unspeakable and full of glory. We need to be the church that says, you know what? I have the answer. And his name is Jesus. We need to be the Peter and Johns who are walking, meeting the needs of the people. 
We need to be the ones who are demonstrating and living out the power of God. And I believe that even though you may be in the midst of chaos, in the midst of a terrible situation, in the midst of panic and fear, in the midst of all that's going on around us, we don't have to ex accept that for our lives. We don't have to accept the fear. We don't have to accept the panic. We don't have to accept that it's always going to be like this. But we can get more than what we expect if we just allow Jesus to do what Jesus does best. He can change your life. You do not have to accept that situation. You don't have to accept that addiction. You don't have to accept that sickness. You don't have to accept the chaos around you. But you can get more than you expect. Jesus can meet the need. All you got to do is allow him. Just like Peter said, lift your eyes. Pick up your head. Look towards me. And I believe that's just symbolism for what we should do when we're in the midst of chaos. Not to hang our head down in shame, but to lift our eyes unto the hills from where our help comes from. Lift our eyes to Jesus, the author and the finisher of our faith. Lift our eyes to the one who can change our life and our situation forever. That's all we've got to do, church. And if you're listening to me, you may be experiencing all of this, but I'm telling you, God can change it. All you got to do is pick up your head and let God change your life. And right now, I just want us all to bow our heads and close our eyes. You may be at home. You may be at work. You may be driving somewhere, wherever you're at right now. If you're driving, don't close your eyes. Amen. <laughs> but I want to ask you today, because first and foremost, I want to ask you, if you don't know Jesus as your personal Savior, I never leave a time of ministry where I don't give the offer, the invitation, because God wants you to, ha to have a relationship with him. He wanted you to have relationships so much that he sent his only son to die on a cross 2,000 years ago to shed his blood. And guess what? That wasn't our punishment. Not, that wasn't his punishment that he took. He took our punishment. He took it upon himself so that he could have a relationship with you. And your life may be like that, man. You may have experienced year upon year upon year of mess ups and, and chaos and fear and just... You just, want, you just felt like, God, I just might as well accept the depression, accept the anxiety, accept this life because this is all I have. But I'm telling you, you don't have to accept that. God can give you more than what you expect. All it takes is one prayer of just saying, Lord, come into my life. Or maybe you're listening to me and you're saying, James, I, I used to know Jesus, but I let the world and the cares of this life and all the stress of life just pull me away. I've experienced so much pain that has pulled me away. I've experienced so much hurt that has pulled me away. And I'm not living like I should. I'm not living according to the word of God. But I want to change that tonight. I want to give my life back to Jesus. I want to give my life back to Christ. All it takes is one prayer. And so if you want to give your life to Jesus or maybe you want to give your life back to Christ, I want us all, everybody, even if you're saved already, I want us all to pray this prayer. Say, dear Lord, Come into my life. Make me yours from this day forward. I believe you died on a cross for my sin. And you rose again for my victory. Lord, wash me clean. I repent of every sin. Now, Lord, don't give me what I want, but give me what I need. Exceed my expectations. I love you. I praise you. And I thank you. In Jesus' name. Amen. Now, real quick, if you, if you gave your heart to the Lord or you rededicated your life to Jesus, what I want you to do is this. I want you to just comment down below. And I want you to let us know that you got saved or you gave your heart to the Lord. Or maybe you don't want everybody to see it. Maybe it's a personal thing between you and Jesus. We understand. So DM us, message us, direct message us so that we can know that you got saved tonight. So that we can help you go closer to Christ. And Lord willing, when we, all this stuff passes over and we can meet face to face again, we'll see you in service with us. But real quick, before we go, I want to make one more altar call. And that's if right now, if you're in a situation where you're saying, James, I've been in this situation so long that I just feel like this is my life now. 
I've been in depression, anxiety, fear, a bad relationship, abusive relationship. I've been in so much panic and so much chaos that I, I just feel like this is my life now. I don't want this to be my life. I want that abundant life you're talking about. I want that peace, that joy, that healing that you're talking about. Well, I'm telling you, you can receive that tonight. And I, wanted, I want you to do this. I want you to close your eyes. I want you to put your hand on the screen if you've got to. But I want, we're all going to pray this prayer. And we're going to pray that God blesses you, that God changes your life, that God will pick up your head, and that your situation will change. Because I believe in a God who is so miraculous and so powerful that he can take something just like that man who have been like that for 40 years. He can take it and he can shift it in just one instance, in one situation, in one moment. He can change your life forever. So if, you're do, if you feel like you're in the middle of something and, and it's chaotic, chaotic and, and scary and, and it's just messed up and you just want your life to change and you've been, you're so close to accepting it, but you want to change that life and you want to go towards the abundant life, I want you to either stretch your hands towards the screen or raise your hands or, or just bow your head either way. And we're going to pray over you right now. And all those who are here with us, we're going to pray with you. So right now, let's pray. Father, in the name of Jesus, Lord God, I pray for every single person who is hearing my voice right now. Lord God, if they are in a situation where it just feels like they've always been like that, they've always been sick, they've always been addicted, they've always been hurting, they've always been broken, they've always been confused. God, if they're in that situation where just like that man who was laying by the gate called beautiful, they feel like they're they're in the middle of something great, but oh, they feel like they're hopeless and discouraged. Lord God, I'm praying for those right now who are broken, Father. And God, I pray wherever they are at, Father, I may be stuck in this room, but Holy Spirit, you're not stuck to a room. You're not stuck to a church house. Holy Spirit, I pray that you would go through the internet, and God, wherever they're at, if they're at their job, if they're at their house God Lord God if they're driving wherever they're at Holy Spirit let the glory of the Lord rush into that place right now in the name of Jesus and God I pray that you would touch them right now God let them lift their head towards the hills where their help comes from let them lift their eyes towards you Jesus the author and the finisher of our faith God I pray Lord touch them in a mighty way and God change their life change that situation break that addiction heal that sickness right now in the name of Jesus oh Oh God, I pray, Holy Spirit, move on their life. God, if they're depressed, give them joy. God, if they're anxious, give them peace, Father. Lord, if they're confused, give them clarity right now, God. Lord, if they're weak, make them strong, Father. Lord, God, if they're hurting and they're broken, God, I pray, heal them right now, whether it's emotional or physical, God, heal it right now in the name of Jesus. And God, I pray, touch their life in a real and powerful way, God. Lord, let them feel the power, the love, the mercy, and the grace of God. And let them feel just the glory of heaven fill their life father and God I pray that their life be changed God I pray their life would be made forever different God and Lord God just like the lame man at the gate Lord when we receive our healing God we're going to praise you we're going to leap we're going to jump we're going to dance we're going to lift our hands and glorify Jesus because Jesus it was you who did it Lord every person saved bills because of you every person heals because of you every person's life who is made different is because of you so God we give you glory in advance God we give you glory for what you're going to do and we love you we thank you and we praise you in Jesus wonderful name and everybody said amen, amen. come on somebody give God praise in this house amen give him praise where you're at hallelujah God you are good and your mercy endures forever hallelujah Hey family, thanks for joining us live for our midweek service. We hope that you enjoyed worshiping right along with us. In case you did miss the service, we will be uploading it to YouTube and we have CDs available if you just want to contact the church. We want to make sure that you join us this coming Sunday at 2 p.m., not 11, 2 p.m. We want to make sure that you are aware of that so you can join us and worship with us for another phenomenal service. And we just want to make sure that you guys stay connected, stay encouraged, and we want to love you to life.